let's uh, pray and uh, we'll start right okay father we thank you lord for this uh, this time that you've given us we thank you that uh, you are with us in our journey you are with us in our learning in our growing and uh, lord this morning we just want to say that our dependence is on you lord we lean not on our own understanding but lord we uh, we completely lean on you uh, holy spirit uh, we pray god that you will reveal your heart to us lord that you will show us uh, the heart of the father that you would uh, reveal lord um, just like jeremiah prayed and uh, that you will show us um, new and wonderful things um, lord uh, from your word of father god even as you promised jeremiah lord and um, we come before you today uh, with that longing with that yearning god i just pray for each one of us here and um, lord uh, each of us in different seasons of life um, and uh, maybe uh, going through different challenges lord personally and as families maybe um, father god we pray that um, you would give us the strength to endure you would give us the strength to move uh, continue moving on and uh, i pray god that uh, each one of us will stand up in faith rise up in faith and speak to the mountains and um, i thank you lord that your word says uh, jeremiah 23 and verse 29 that your word is like a fire that burns and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces and this morning i pray god that the word that you're quickening to our hearts lord the rema word oh god that we will that we will wield the hammer God, that we will use it, Lord. We will speak your word. We will declare your word, Lord, uh, and speak to those mountains in our way uh, and say, mountain, move in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, now, I just want us to uh, go ahead and take this time to uh, just listen to God. You know, what is it that is putting in your heart? You know, what is that word? What is that promise that is putting in your heart? Um, and it's... Um, you know, it, it could be in direct relation to some of the challenges, some of the mountains that you're facing. Uh, so, um, so use that, speak that, right? Declare that, hold on to that word, right? And uh, yeah, um, it could be something that you've uh, read, you know, in the past, or it could be something that uh, that you just read recently. Uh, that you know, when that scripture comes to mind, you know, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, because the Lord Jesus said that um, He will, the Holy Spirit will teach us and also remind us. Okay, so the work of reminding uh, some of the words that he's already taught us or put in our hearts is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And this morning, uh, even as we welcome the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you know, let him remind us, let him remind us of the words that he's put in our hearts. Um, you know, for, for me uh, personally, I'm just reminded of that verse in James, which says, you know, let him who uh, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives, you know, without reproach without making fun, without despising, right? In other words, so um, he gives, he, so I, I just need to receive. Uh, um, and in Christ, you know, he was made wisdom for us. So we have access to the heart of God, to, we have access to the mind of, uh, of God. In fact, we've been given the mind of Christ. Um, so uh, so I, I feel that spirit of God just quickening those things to me. And uh, you know, it's for me personally, and I'm sure it's for some of you who are listening as well. So um, just go ahead and uh, just receive that. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you, God. We thank you. Spirit of God, we thank you that you are, you are real and uh, authentic and uh, your presence is tangible. Your ministry is tangible. It's not some theory, but something that is uh, as real, Lord, as uh, the air that we breathe. And, and God, we, we just want to invite you, Lord. Invite you, Lord. And maybe make it a practice to, to just walk in step with you even as you lead us. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In your matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Well, okay. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm just looking at some of the messages and uh, yeah, praise God. Uh, yes, Isaac. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we've been uh, looking uh, at the ministry or the the person and work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Right, last uh, last two sessions were on that, and uh, today we'll we'll just wrap up that and move on. 
um, uh, we look at a few more scriptures in the Old Testament. So um, like we um, uh, studied you know, in the, in the last class, uh, one of the things that we need to understand is that the Holy Spirit uh, moved in a different way. You know, he's, he's not a different Holy Spirit. He's not an angry Holy Spirit or, you know, across the Testaments where it's the same God, right? Uh, uh, same Holy Spirit. But the way he ministered, the way he moved and did things was different. And a lot of it, uh, and, and it was because of the cross. You know, the cross, um, uh, the Savior was yet to come. Uh, and he was yet to be, uh, you know, uh, take the sin of the world. And, and so everything was uh, a shadow then. And now we are living in a new dispensation. So um, uh, we are living on, you know, this side of the cross, looking back. And there were people in the old world to the cross. So um, so it's, it's, uh, it's important that we understand that. Right. Otherwise, uh, um, you know, we, we could end up getting frustrated, or or even having a very different, uh, deficient understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, so yeah. So th that is what um, uh, we've been studying. So today, uh, let's look at a few more scriptures um, from the Old Testament, where the Spirit of God um, worked and what He did, and let's try to understand that. So I'm on, I'm on page nine. If you're following in the notes on page nine, and we're looking at uh, first and second chronicles, we're going through. I'm not going to go through every uh, verse, um, but I want to encourage you to you know read through uh, uh, once the class is over, or you know during the week before the next class to read through all these scriptures. I'm just going to pick one or two. So um, uh, I'm looking at first chronicles and uh, chapter twelve and verses seventeen and eighteen. Right, uh, First Chronicles chapter twelve and verse seventeen. It says, "And David went out to meet them, and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if it is to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment." Okay. So, um, what is the context? The context here is that uh, you know David is uh, living like a fugitive. He's hunted down by Saul, and uh, and there were people who were uh, also who were also you know uh, helping uh, David and, and and coming and joining with uh, David. So um, uh, the verses before that talk about that, and uh, people were coming and and joining and joining hands uh, with David. Right? So. And David was receiving them, and uh, and this, this was becoming a mighty army. Uh, verse eighteen, um, it says, "Then the spirit of God, then the spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, okay, and he said, We are yours, O David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers, for your God helps you." So David received them and made them captains of the troops. So. Um, so what we uh, what we see here is the spirit of God uh, coming upon Amasai, of course, just like how He did upon different people, different times. And here we see something that He is gathering the people and bringing them uh, under the leadership of David. Okay. So in other words, He is actually bringing the leaders uh, under the leadership of David. So. Uh, well, that's something that we can, we definitely can lean on for those of us who are in ministry and those of us who are, you know, um, uh, who are raising up other leaders, right, and who are called to, uh, uh, called to be in ministry. In ministry, of course, we will uh, serve people, and one of the things that we will also be doing is to raise up others, right, who will be pillars in the church, right, and uh, and. The Holy Spirit helps us um, or, or brings uh, uh, leaders, and it's like a divine connection, right? Spirit of God coming and, and doing those things. So, um, so we can expect the Holy Spirit to move in those ways, right? Um, in our day and time, especially because He dwells among us and talks to, um, uh, engages, communes with us, right? To, and so He will do that with other leaders, with other believers, and bring them. Uh, and so that they will join in the mission, unite in the mission of building God's kingdom. So it could be a ministry, it could be um, even other things. You know, we can we can believe God. You know, God, uh, 
I need people to help. You know, I can't do this on my own. And uh, maybe it's a company that you're building. Maybe it's a, it's a work God has called you to maybe plant a school. Maybe he's called you to, uh, you know, start some work, right? Maybe an orphanage, maybe something. And, and all this requires people and requires, uh, you know, quality people, right? People who have the same vision, people who uh, who can stand and um, shoulder to shoulder and work with you, people who are faithful, committed, and so on. It's a, it's a big list, right? It's a big ask. It's a big, um, uh, it's a big task as well. And it's a big list, right? So, um, so God will do that. God will connect. God will uh, you know, draw and the uh, uh, spirit of God will inspire people and say, okay, you now go and do that. So uh, as leaders, we need to be sensitive, uh, of course, uh, uh, to this um, ministry or the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay so let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's look at, um, you know, First Chronicles 28. Okay, uh, we move on to chapter 28. And um, chapter 28 and verse 12. Okay, chapter 28 and verse 12. Uh, maybe we'll read verse 11 also. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the vestibule, its houses, its treasuries, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat, and the plans for all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord of all the chambers all around of the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries for the dedicated things. So here we see plans, detailed blueprints, design. And what is it for? It is for the sanctuary um, and, and and for the temple and uh, and several things. You know, it's it's uh, it's treasuries, it's upper chambers, it's you know every every little detail uh, and in detail. There's a you know there's a map or a blueprint, and it is by the Spirit of God. Okay, it is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is uh, put it in in David's heart, and he shares it with uh, Solomon. Okay, so so we see that um, uh, just like how the Holy Spirit worked uh, during the time of uh, Moses and. El and uh, he uh, enabled Bezalel to um, and the team and his team to come up with you know, designs and uh, great skill. So also here that God can actually, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit can give us a detailed uh, blueprint, detailed designs. Okay? So for what you know, uh, it can it can be for you know uh, what what you are engaged in. Right now, it could be for it could be for ministry, it could be for uh, a certain other things, or it could be even for you know uh, for what we think is not so spiritual. You know, it could it could be for your house, it could be for uh, several other things. I remember one um, uh, hearing this testimony. Someone someone shared about this and said that this is what happened. You know, like. Um, uh, this uh, this particular uh, software engineer, uh, he was actually, a, sorry, uh, it was a network uh, administrator, right? IT network administrator. So he was working for this company and there was something wrong in one of the servers and he could not figure it out. You know, I forget the details of it and the technical terms of it, but he could not uh, figure out a solution and there was, you know, it was a major problem, right? So he had heard a message about Holy Spirit, you know, uh, knowing what is wrong? Holy Spirit can actually speak to us and show us and teach us. So he immediately started to pray. He said, "Holy Spirit, you show me. God, you show me. I don't know how to solve this thing. Can you please show me?" And and the testimony is that God showed him, you know, the in the interior of the of the of the server of the computer, and what was exactly physically wrong. In I think it one of the, one of the ICs or you know I forget the details of it, but God showed him that, and uh, it was as if like a you know like a picture in front of him, and he was able to uh, solve that, right? Fix what was wrong and solve it. So, well, can God do what He did then? Uh, can He do it today in our day and time? Of course, He can. Right. Uh, so we see that also as the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, let's move on to Second uh, Chronicles. Okay, in Second Chronicles, we see um, uh, several people upon whom 
the spirit of god comes and they give out a message a message of instruction um as uh, as an in, uh, as uh, 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 they and they they are like the spokesperson of the god they speak of god they speak the wisdom of god they give the instruction that comes from god okay let's look at uh, maybe one uh, scripture here second chronicles 15 and um, uh, maybe a second chronicles 20 and verse 14 okay second chronicles 20 we know is uh, uh, you would have studied this in uh, praise and worship class like about king jehoshaphat and uh, and what he does uh, when he faces the army uh, you know the counsel that he receives and, and the things that he does okay so second chronicles 20 and verse 14 then the spirit of the lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, okay, so the spirit of the Lord came upon us. So another uh, usage for uh, God coming upon a person and releasing a person, a message to be communicated. And this is what he said, listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them for the Lord is with you. So here comes, you know, it's, it's a very timely word it's a very encouraging word, okay? Um, I'm sure, you know, we've been seeing pictures, you've been seeing, uh, you know, in the news, the visuals of uh, uh, what's happening in Afghanistan, very scary, you know, there's a mission gun fire all around and uh, you can hear that the shots being fired. And uh, this just this morning, I was just looking at some of the um, footage. There was a reporter there and uh, a lady and she's uh, she's dressed in the burqa and uh, and she's, uh, you know, going around and, and interviewing and, and it's things are just chaotic, right? There's uh, so much of fear and so on. So here, you no, know, it's it's a similar situation, you know, a situation of war where they hear that there is a great multitude, verse 20. If you read Second Chronicles 20 and verse, verse 2, sorry. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is En Gedi. And, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. You know, the, the first reaction or the response, the emotion that he feels when he hears this news is that, uh, oh, man, I... I uh, um, uh, I'm so fearful, right? Um, yeah, Divya, sorry. Um, actually, Divya, that, that thing is automatic, so uh, I don't have to do anything. They just come in automatically. Okay. Um, yeah, I yeah. think in the, in the WhatsApp group, I saw Blessings message. I'm not sure whether she's in. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So um, the thing is, uh, I I don't do anything. It's just that maybe okay. as they are coming, you know, if they are, uh, yeah, if the internet link is, uh, I mean, the um, is a little slow, then they get dropped out. So yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. Right, right, sure. No worries. Hey, no, Brian. Sure, no worries. Okay, so this is what uh, we see here. The first response that he that he experiences is fear. Okay, the, uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so that's that's the state they are in you know we are not strong enough this is a great army that is coming and uh, you know of course being a king he knows what armies will do and um, uh, he's just thinking about probably he's playing uh, you know all that is going on in his mind he's replaying all those images and here is the message from god right uh, here is this message uh, listen, you need not fight this battle. Don't be afraid. Don't be mis dismayed. For the battle is God's. You know, it's He's got your back. He's got things covered. Okay, and the response to that now is worship. Right, the initial response was fear. 
word of God comes through the spirit of God and Jehoshaphat responds is, and the response of everyone who hears that is worship. So there's great comfort which comes through the prophetic word as the spirit of God comes upon um, uh, Jehaziel, right? So he, verse 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Okay, um, so a beautiful picture that we see here and uh, an amazing instant which is recorded for us that um, the Spirit of God you know, speaks through people. The Spirit of God brings comforting, encouraging words, uh, prophetic, and it's prophetic. It's about the future and saying, this is what it is. And the Spirit of God brings a strategy, you know, right? You don't need to fight, position yourself, stand still, see the salvation, um, they will come up by the ascent of as is meaning okay this is the location this is how they're going to come in but um you know, and you will find them at the end of the brook all that all those details amazing details right um, uh, um so the importance of uh, you know learning to hear hear from the spirit and i think somebody asked a question at the end of last class right uh you know how do i how can i hear uh, how can I know that the uh, Spirit of God is speaking? I just want you to, um, you know, just wait for some more time. Uh, we're going to look at it in detail, right? Um, and uh, we'll we'll handle that in detail. Okay, right. So, um, so this is something that we see in Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Okay, let's uh, move on. Um, so we go to uh, Nehemiah, and Nehemiah is uh, in chapter nine. He's actually recounting. Okay. He's recounting something that has happened, and uh, uh, let's just read that. Um, and even in Ezra, we, we read about uh, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, uh, uh, you know, it's it's interesting, Ezra chapter 1, just before Nehemiah, Ezra chapter 1, um, verse 1, uh, it says, The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom so the lord's work uh, you know uh, the lord's stirring up uh, 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 cyrus to do something that he uh, you know he would not normally do right he's actually talking about the uh, rebuilding or uh, building of the temple and he says uh, talking about the support and uh, everything that was to be granted and he's actually you know issuing um, uh, a commandment right? it's the spirit of god doing that uh, and stirring up the spirit of cyrus to do this so we see that okay nehemiah chapter 9 uh, so nehemiah is um, you know, here they are actually um, reading uh, the, the the scriptures, and the and they're spending the, you know um, time doing that. Um, this is the um, uh, you know they've been seeking the Lord, they've been fasting, and it says here that they confessed and worshipped the Lord, and it was uh, um, it, it it was a congregational setting, right? And um, uh, so this is the message that comes, and they are recounting certain things that um, the Spirit of God did. And verse twenty, if you say, if you see, it says that you also gave your good spirit to instruct them, right? To instruct the Israelites, and you did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. So you took care of, uh, you know, uh, their physical needs and you also instructed them. Um, so we see that, right? So, and, and, and on and on, you know, if you look at Job, if you look at the Psalms, uh, uh, we see this. Okay, let's, let's look at a couple of uh, uh, verses. Okay, is everybody following through? I know we're looking at, uh, you know, many, many uh, scriptures and I hope you have your Bibles and your constantly you know turning and look at the word um, but it's it's um, it's important that we see this in the word so that we, we understand that hey, this is god this is the holy spirit and these are all the different things that he did right um, okay so let's look at job 33 and verse 4 and the spirit of god has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life Okay, so these are scriptures that you can actually go to and just worship the Lord, just meditate, and, and you know you can make it a conversation with God. Oh, Spirit of God, you've made me, and uh, it's your breath that gives me life, right? And we can just praise Him and thank Him 
for the breath of the spirit of god which has given us life so he breathed and we we come alive um okay let's move on to psalms okay we go we go to psalm 45 and uh, verse 6 psalm 45 and uh, uh, verses 6 and 7 it's a very interesting uh, it's not a direct reference to the holy spirit but really an indirect reference um your throne o god is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom you love righteousness and hate wickedness therefore god your god has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions it's a prophetic psalm about the messiah and uh, it's talking about the oil of gladness now if you if you turn to isaiah 61 we see the reference there to the oil of gladness or oil of joy okay the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound and on and in verse 3 to console those who mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he may be glorified okay so th this is a great exchange that is happening and the oil of joy uh, or the work of the holy spirit to bring about um the uh you know the, by his work this gladness this joy uh, in exchange and he just takes away the mourning right so so we see that um and uh, let's look at one more uh, before we move on. Uh, Psalm 51 and verse 10. Okay, Psalm 51, and we know this is a prayer that David prays, a prayer of repentance, uh, a prayer of just coming back to God and saying, God, you uh, you show me, you teach me. And uh, I, I know we have this beautiful hymn, uh, beautiful song, uh, chorus really, uh, Create in me a clean heart. Right? I'm sure you would have heard it. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Right? Um, so uh, it's taken from here. Okay, um, But I just want to point out a couple of things. Okay, um, Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Okay, so this is a this is an amazing prayer. He comes to the end of his, uh, you know, end of himself, and he realizes uh, that he, what he's done was wrong. There's murder and adultery, and uh, and he's you know he's done all that. And he Nathan comes, prophet Nathan comes, and um, you know um, and confronts him, and um, and so uh, here is David who's repenting. Here is David who's praying and he's saying lord you created me a clean heart god you know uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's too messy it's too dirty create a clean heart renew a steadfast but you know steadfast meaning you know i want to be consistent i don't want to be up and down uh, uh, something that is steadfast um, and let my faithfulness and everything let it be steadfast consistent and um Verse 11, he says, do not cast me away from your presence. He knows the value of God's presence. He, uh, and so he, he prays that, oh, no, I don't want to go from your presence. You know, uh, I, he valued the presence of God, enjoyed the presence of God, and wrote, uh, wrote many psalms uh, from that place of worship. Right? And, and then he says, uh, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Okay, see, so he has uh, experienced the... Uh, the fellowship of the holy spirit right uh, and you remember right um it's the by the spirit of god he was able to kill the uh and you know, protect his flock right? uh, from the wild animals that attack, attacked him by the spirit of god he was able to uh you know uh, end uh, goliath's intimidation and terror god you know he would play his harp and uh, the evil spirit would uh, leave. So he has seen that. He knows that it's not him. It's not his uh, great magical notes or anything, but it's the spirit of God, even as he played on that instrument. And God, you know, used that. Right. So he's saying, God, I value that. Do not take your spirit from me. So now 
in our day and time of course we you know i i love the song and we can definitely you know uh, sing it in worship and use it and uh, you know sing it and uh, but the thing is uh, as new testament believers um you know maybe what would be a right rendition would be like lord i don't want to grieve you grieve your spirit i don't want to quench uh, your spirit because he is with us like he dwells in us he's going to be with us to help us um uh, move or help us be christ like right so uh, because the holy spirit says that the holy uh, i mean because the lord jesus when we when we read uh, uh, john chapter um, uh 15 or is it 14 um john chapter 14 right john chapter 14 when he's talking about the holy spirit so the lord jesus says that um verse 15 and 16 if you love me keep my commandments verse 16 so this is john chapter 14 verse 16 and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever that he may stay with you forever right so so the question you know what happens when we sin does the holy spirit come and go does the holy spirit depart well i definitely the flesh in what i've done i prevent you know uh, i'm i'm unable to because of my emotions because of my shame because of my guilt i'm unable to maybe hear god clearly but he is actually with us to convict us that's one of the work ministry of the holy spirit conviction and to guide us into all truth right so that's uh, lead us to repentance and by his power put to death meaning bring to an end the deeds of the flesh the works of the flesh sinful habits addictions uh, things that are stubborn right uh, lustful things lust of the flesh lust of the eyes bring an end to that and that is why he he comes and he indwells us that is what he leads us to so uh, so uh, while uh, you know this uh, well the song is beautiful this hymn is beautiful like it to us as believers new testament believers who are on this side of the cross we need to understand that uh, uh, you know god will not take away the holy spirit because he has given us the holy spirit to be with us to indwell uh, in us forever yes we can definitely block the work of the spirit like we studied you know we can he can be resisted right uh we we uh, you know he will not force his way in god will not he's given us free will but he we can resist him right we can quench the work meaning we can it's like pouring water on fire whatever he is leading whatever he is doing we can quench and definitely we can grieve grieve the holy spirit meaning, meaning that he he is saddened by some of the things maybe some of the things that we say some of the things that we do uh, the things that we look at you know he is saddened but he always works in us to bring us to repentance right so that's something that i just wanted to point out okay so we looked at that verse in isaiah uh, uh maybe uh, you know the several references in uh, jeremiah and uh, and i just want to encourage you to read through right uh, um and uh, also look at um, yeah i just want to look at a couple of references in ezekiel you know it's very interesting uh, ezekiel uh, ezekiel has this encounter with the holy spirit a supernatural encounters visions and so on uh, but also something that is happening to him you know in the physical right um, so let's let's read there let's go to um, ezekiel and look at ezekiel 2 verse 2 okay um ezekiel 2 and uh, um uh, and let me read from uh, the previous chapter right uh, verse um, chapter 1 verse 28 end of 28 onwards it says and so uh when i saw it i fell on my face and i heard a voice of one speaking and he said to me son of man stand on your feet and i will speak to you verse 2 then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet and i heard him who spoke to me okay so there is he has this encounter 
like an, you see something appearance of rainbow in a cloud uh, appearance of brightness all around it and the, uh, the appearance of the likeness of glory of god was there and uh, it's uh, it's amazing you know when you read through some of these things um, uh, and this person uh, uh, he hears uh, ezekiel hears his voice and the spirit of god he says the spirit of god entered him and set him on his feet you know it was as if you know physically just lifted him up and set him on his feet and we see that over and over again um, god seems to deal with ezekiel in this way right ezekiel chapter 3 and uh, and then verse uh, 12 um yeah verse 12 okay then the spirit lifted me up and i heard behind me a great thunderous voice blessed is the glory of the lord from this place the spirit lifted verse 14 so the spirit lifted me up and took me away and i went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit but the hand of the lord was strong upon me so he was having these powerful encounters uh, which seemed to affect him uh, physically as well right and uh, we see the spirit lifted him up and and you know yes uh, it could have been a vision okay it could have been a vision it could have been something that he was seeing but uh, but here we see that uh, uh, something physical almost you know physical happening um, if you look at one more verse uh, then we understand uh, let's say we uh, look at verse 24 right um yeah so 23 so i arose and went out into the plain um look at verse 22 you know it's uh, very nice uh, it's it's, uh, it's beautiful then the hand of the lord was upon me there and he said to me arise go out into the plain and there i shall talk with you, you know, uh, just as an aside i don't know if many of us have heard that that kind of a leading you know just you know come you know we like how we call a person just you know, just give me to just come here and uh, and then we go and then that person has something important to say you know especially when guests are in the house and uh, you know uh, maybe uh, if you're married your spouse wants to say something you know we're out of we're out of milk don't don't tell them coffee you know tell them tea <laughs> you know uh, just call call you aside and i want i want to speak to you something important or a child calls and says can you just help me out in this so we see something similar here called out and said go to the plane and i i want to talk to you you know come out from whatever you're doing i want to talk to you we okay, saw so arrows and went into the plane and behold the glory of the lord stood there like the glory that i saw by the river chebar and i fell on my face so he has had this kind of experience before he recognizes it and then he falls down then the spirit entered me and set me on my feet you know here we see it again set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me go shut yourself inside your house and and some things there right um and is 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 about to do a prophetic act take some ropes and and all that so uh we see some exciting things here that, that you know the spirit of god does something which is um, which goes beyond our Our, our thinking our rational and so on uh, we are used to things in the natural we are th- used to things that are finite and many of us you know sometimes uh, we have our apprehensions about the supernatural because uh, what we see of or hear of the supernatural is what we you know uh, what we hear about witchcraft or or the dark side of it right but here is god holy you know good who will not do us wrong who will not do us harm um and the holy spirit uh, communing giving instructions which is accompanied by something supernatural in terms of visions in terms of uh, an experience um and so you know Ezekiel is able to understand Ezekiel is able, able to recognize hey this is the glory of god oh, this is the glory of god this is god you know he's able to discern in a spirit this is god this is god and he he actually falls on his face and worships right that what we see in verse 23 okay right so let's move on let's go to daniel and daniel again you know similar 
uh, uh, experiences. Let's go to um, the next book, Daniel. And um, is it Daniel 4? Yeah, Daniel 4 and verse 8. Okay, Daniel 4. Now, this is um, Nebuchadnezzar. He's testifying about Daniel. Uh, very similar to um, how the Pharaoh, um, the Egyptian king, testified about Joseph, you know, in response to Joseph uh, interpreting his dream, right? Uh, very similar to that. Here we see that uh, the, the king uh, testifying, uh, Nebuchadnezzar testifying, and this is what he says in verse 8. We see um, Daniel came before me, um, and his name is uh, Belteshazzar, according to the name, um, according to the name of my God. In him is the spirit of the holy God. So he's making a distinction. You know, he's not yet, uh, you know, he's not not yet following the Lord or anything, and not not worshiping Yahweh. But he makes a distinction. He's he's able to, uh, you know, kind of recognize, you know, it's not like my God. You know, and in fact, he's called. Uh, uh, Belteshazzar, and according to the name of his God, you know, it's like, um, it's like, uh, you know, let's say um, uh, somebody, let's Mark, uh, Mark is a, uh, you know, it's a Christian name. Mark is being called Murgan or something, you know, uh, which is a, you know, deity, name of deity, uh, Hindu deity. So, so that is how he has called him, according to his God, he says, uh, but here he says, in him is the spirit of the holy God, right? So he says, uh, and I told the dream before him, etc. Um, so he recognizes that, and we and we see that uh, the spirit of God making a difference, um, and he's referring to interpretation and so on, right? Uh, let's look at another verse, which is um, uh, um, Daniel chapter six. Okay, Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Um, well, actually, uh, sorry, uh, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, Daniel chapter 6 is again about this uh, thing. Let's move on to Daniel 7 and verse 15. Daniel 7 and verse 15. Um, he uh, Daniel is experiencing something in his spirit, and he says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, within my body and the visions of my head um, troubled me and so on. Somebody asked a question. Um, okay. Um, right. Okay, so so we see, uh, we read about, um, you know, these experiences that uh, uh, the Daniel had, uh, the supernatural experience, similar to uh, Ezekiel, and obviously, uh, you know, by the Spirit of God, uh, though we so don't really uh, see, a, you know, a direct reference here. Um, and and he says that he was, you know, something was impacting his spirit um, uh, great, greatly, that he was grieved in his spirit. You know? uh, so it's, it was not uh, the Holy Spirit grieving, but, you know, he was grieved in his spirit. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and, and on and on, I'm, I'm sure, you, you know, all of us uh, know this verse, Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 and 29. Um, it's the prophecy which uh, Peter like uh, shared from he was this is the scripture that peter referred to in acts chapter 2 right uh, when he when he saw what was uh, uh, acts chapter 3 sorry when he shared that sermon about what was happening the outpouring of the holy spirit so this is what we see joel chapter 2 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Um, so this is the Lord saying that this is what I will do. I will pour out my spirit and this will be their response, you know, as a work of my spirit, uh, because of me pouring out my spirit, they will... You know, they will prophesy. They will. There will be dreams. There will be visions. And uh, and people who serve my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit. Okay. And uh, Micah, Haggai, Zechariah, uh, um, we see this uh, uh, the work of the spirit. So I just want to encourage uh, us to take some time uh, 
to go through again right uh, some of these uh, scriptures just to understand uh, the work of the spirit in the holy spirit in the old testament okay um so we'll uh, right now we'll we'll take a break it's almost 9:50 we'll take a break and then we will come back and we will look at um, you know what is the work of the holy spirit in the life of jesus right in the life of the lord jesus during his earthly ministry how did the holy spirit uh, what did the holy spirit do um, uh, just before he uh, he was uh, his arrival you know in the different people um, what did he do in the life of jesus what did he do and so on right and after that um uh okay um okay whatsapp group i think there are two references uh i mean two queries i'm not sure there is no official whatsapp group um but uh, whatsapp group for the students but uh, i'm not sure i'm not aware but um, okay so maybe somebody can help if there's a whatsapp group with all the students um, so can you please add robert and also um, zelitoli to it okay yeah pastor actually it does the uh, yeah pastor actually it is the old whatsapp group where i was part of uh, uh, like the spring session last year that i was part of. Okay. yeah last year. so i'm not part of any new group as of like where we are all like the uh, fall session uh, students are there mm. so yeah uh, i can surely ask the admin to add uh, sitkenu and selitoli um yeah if yeah. Yeah, all the others yeah if they want to be added to yeah. the old group i'm not sure whether it will help yeah because uh, mm. if the discussions and everything is going to be you know um, based on that uh, old group and whatever they are doing so then mm -hmm. that may not be useful so i mean you decide and then uh, yeah. and then you can uh, probably yeah help out okay so we'll take a break and we'll come back at uh, 10 o'clock thank you <laughs> 